Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having an awesome and wonderful day. Today we're going to be discussing what pop-off pressure is on a diaphragm style carburetor such as these out of my Polaris SLT750 Wave Runner, what it does and why it's important, and also how to make a pop-off pressure gauge for around 20 bucks. So first we need to understand how the carburetor works. So first you've got your push factor, which would obviously be your fuel pump. You've got your fuel inlet, pushing around, whatever the carburetor doesn't use goes back to the fuel tank. Now. Once that fuel is inside the carburetor, it goes through this simple fuel filter, stir it around up to where your needle seat would be. Now this little brass piece is called the needle seat. It sits right there. And then you've got your needle, which plugs that needle seat. So now that we've determined the push factor of where the fuel is going, now we need to determine the pull factor, which would be your engine's vacuum pulling the fuel. So when you open the throttle, it opens this blade right here, which creates a suction inside of here pulling fuel through these jets now you've got this little part right here which has fuel inlets or fuel outlets right here and here that fuel comes into this little part through this little hole so this part sits right there now you need to get fuel from that needle to here but how do you regulate that needle to let the right amount of fuel into the carburetor to prevent flooding the engine. Now that's where pop-off pressure comes in. So right here I've got an assembled carburetor. You see I've got my needle, I've got this rocker arm, and the spring underneath the, the rocker arm. So when I push this, it lets fuel into the carburetor. So the reason why they're called diaphragm style carburetors is because it uses this diaphragm. And obviously, like I was saying before, that suction, when you open up this valve, creates a suction pulling fuel through, and the atmospheric pressure will push this diaphragm down, opening that valve or needle. Now, once it opens the needle, it'll let the right amount of fuel through. And then once this blade closes, obviously that atmospheric pressure will stop and that needle will be closed so the engine doesn't flood. Now, what pop-off pressure is, is how much pressure it takes from behind with compressed air to pop this needle open. So you've got two variables that could affect your pop-off pressure. One would be your needle seat size, which for my case is a 2.0. But if I go to a 2.5 due to the extra surface area, it would take less pressure to pop that needle open. And also through that bigger hole, it could let more fuel in. But the other variable would be your spring. It sits right under here, under this dimple. You could increase or decrease the strength of that spring to increase or decrease your pop-off pressure. So why is this pop-off pressure thing so important? It's because obviously every engine has a different amount of suction on the carburetor. So if this spring is too tight and the engine can't pull this membrane down to lift that needle, then I can't get fuel and it'll bog down. But, but on the other side, if the engine has too much suction and easily pulls this membrane down because the spring is too weak, then it'll let too much fuel and flood the engine giving you a hard time starting the engine, along with it bogging really hard when you go to hit the gas. So now that you know what pop-off pressure is and what it does, now how do you check it? So now to check the pressure itself, you need to get a tool kind of like this, or you can make one like I did in this case, I made it for 20 bucks from Harbor Freight. By getting this pressure regulator, just this adapter to your air hose, and then an attachment for this ho fuel hose, and a hose clamp so that I could clamp it on to the fuel inlet. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to take this with the hose clamp and put it on to your fuel inlet. There, and you tighten it up. Now that it's all tightened up, you need to pressurize your tool. What you'll want to do is you'll want to push this, open up your needle, and spray some WD-40 or drip some fuel to create some liquid contact. Now that will simulate fuel being inside the carburetor and obviously you want it as accurate as possible. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to take your fingers or a fuel plug and plug off all the other entrances or exits of the fuel line. So once you've plugged it, you want to take your regulator and you want to turn up the pressure very slowly and watch for when that needle starts moving, you see it started moving, and it should pop around 18 PSI. There it goes. Now you shut off your tool again, grab some more WD-40, 
you want to record your results and spray some more WD-40 in there. And you want to test this usually two to three times to make sure it's accurate. Once again, slowly open up your tool. Very slowly gain pressure. Watch that needle very closely and listen for it to pop. There it goes again. All right, now that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe. I think in the near future, I'm probably going to do a video on how a carburetor with a float works. And also subscribe if you wanna see some random shenanigans like going to the track and such like that. But anyways, I'll see you next time. Have a good day. See ya.